Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 16th to the 31st, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Pisces, January 16th to 31st, 2022, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. 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 At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Strength card, which is Leo energy, and we have the Hermit, which is Virgo energy. So if we have Leo or Virgo within our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully at our root. So is the Sun energy coming through astrologically and Mercury energy coming through astrologically because Leo is ruled by the Sun, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. We then have the Moon, which is us, Pisces coming through very powerfully. This is the very essence of ourselves. We're represented by the moon in the major arcana, by the cups in the minor arcana. Then we have the world. So the world is opening to us and we're also opening to the world. We have the fool and we have the 10 of pentacles, which is beautiful at our heart, the hanged man and the ace of wands. I like how we have in our inner self, all major arcana and we have a major a major arcana card in each section at, at the root we're just using a major arcana deck so it doesn't really count but it, it does too you know so there's such intensity here moving us forward so let's see what our energy to be mindful of is angels and spirit guides show me clearly so we have the queen of wands and the hermit which is interesting because that's kind of like our root energy right so the queen of wands wands represents fire sign energy aries leo sagittarius and then the hermit of course represents virgo energy so it's being very mindful of somebody who is very passionate but also very very secretive there is somebody who burns very bright, brightly but doesn't let you see everything that they're doing or not even see everything that they're doing they like to stay in the shadows and there's going to be somebody who's going to be like you know just kind of like follow, follow me, follow what I'm doing, but I'm not going to tell you everything. I'm not going to give you a reason why. And there's just a lot of secretive, a lot of secretiveness around what they're saying. And they, they're promising a lot, yet they're not going to be able to produce a, anything to back it up or very little to back it up. So be mindful of this. Also, our 
our sister energy, Pisces, is Virgo. So we have that coming through here at the energy to be mindful of and also at our root. So sister energy is just like sisters. They can be your best friend, build you up, absolutely fantastic. And they could also be your worst enemy, right? Know all your weaknesses and push your buttons like nobody else. So just being really aware of that is going to be very important during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So this is our chakra energy. It is rebirth. It is the earth star chakra located six inches below our feet. And this is a sense of us being reborn, of embracing our passion, our understanding. And we're not seeing the world right now as the, the caterpillar inching along the ground. We're looking more at a kind of bigger, broader view of things. And that's how our sight is being reborn during this time, our instincts, our desires. So let's talk about this time astrologically. So we have on the 16th of January, the sun conjunct Pluto. So the sun comes through very powerfully because Leo is ruled by the sun. This brings deep and intense emotions to the surface. We want to expand and better ourselves and we will not be satisfied with the easy way. There is also an amazing willpower to be harnessed on this day, and it can lead us to life-changing roads, life-changing events, because there's such a sense of focus and a sense of force. On the 17th of January, we have the full moon in Cancer, and this is the wolf moon, and there will be a separate video done on that. On the 18th of January, we have Uranus going direct. Now Uranus went into retrograde on the 19th of August. This is also going to be important if we're born on the cusp with Aquarius or we have Aquarius in our chart because Uranus rules Aquarius. So Uranus went into retrograde on the 19th of August. And when Uranus goes into retrograde, it brings inner change because of the outer change in our lives. Now we're going to see things start to settle down, you know, start to straighten their themselves out. And because Uranus is now direct now you know moving forward in in the proper kind of direction so we're going to find things moving forward in a more proper direction for us in a more savory direction for the way that we want to move forward within our lives on the 23rd of january the sun is conjunct mercury retrograde coming through very powerfully and going to affect us quite deeply at our root because we have the sun here and we have mercury here with virgo this is a fantastic aspect for artists and people seeking to create a new way of life for themselves now because mercury is in retrograde there can be some frustration around the concept of ideas and bringing them forward into the world and you know conceptualizing them moving things forward so just be aware of this don't let it bring you down embrace your active mind embrace your communication embrace what it is that you desire but also know that it's not going to be as smooth as we want it to be on the 24th of january mars is entering into capricorn amplified if you're born on the cusp of aries because aries is ruled by mars this is this is a time if you want to conquer anything, if you want to go after anything, this is the time to do it. Here we have the warrior energy of Mars and the practical energy of Capricorn coming together to make us really rather unstoppable. On the 26th of January, we have Neptune squared Lilith. This is a very powerful alignment. Neptune is also known as the Lord of the Invisible Kingdom. And this is also, we're ruled by Neptune, Pisces. So say Pluto. We're ruled by Neptune Pisces. And because we are ruled by Neptune, whenever Neptune comes up, it's so much more intense for us. So here we we are really seeing that the Lord of the Invisible Kingdom, well, that's where we are most comfortable. We're most comfortable in our dreams, in our hearts, in our ideas. And here with Lilith, it's having us look at our darker our darker fears and the doubts that we have. And this can be very uncomfortable for us. We don't want to see the doubts around our dreams. We want to see our dreams moving forward and we can be very frustrated already. Why aren't I heading in that right direction? Why isn't this going the way that I want it to go? So just facing these doubts and these fears around our dreams can be something that's terrifying for us, but it's also going to be something that's very necessary, very empowering for us to look at what it is we deeply want and be honest with ourselves and honor the way that we want to move forward and not let certain things keep us held back. On the 29th of January, the sun is going to be sextile Chiron, also amplified because of the Leo energy here. This aspect shows us our wounds in our strengths, for forcing us to face what we might not want to. And it's going to be good to see the wounds within our strength. It's going to make us stronger. It's going to have us looking at things from different avenues, you know, embracing different ways forward. 
And this is going to be actually making us more powerful in the end. Also on the 29th of January, we have Mercury retrograde conjunct Pluto. Again, Mercury coming up strongly because of the the Hermit energy right here, ruled Virgo energy ruled by Mercury. This makes us greatly intelligent and deeply curious. Because Mercury is in retrograde, we can be all over the place in our curiosity and our discovery and our ideas. And we're going to feel very scattered on this day at times. And yet it's going to be us gathering up information for a transformation, which is a really good thing. On the 29th of January, Venus is going direct. And this brings us out of a challenging love cycle. And that has begun when Venus went into retrograde on the 19th of December. And it has us looking at what we love and what we want from the world more openly, more honestly with ourselves. On the 30th of January, the sun is squared Uranus. Again, if we are born on the cusp of Aqu Aquarius or if we have, you know, Aquarius within our natal chart, this comes through very strongly here. It says people can find us, you know, abrupt and provocative during this time. We're going to be rather provoking. We're going to be, you know, not, not letting, let, not letting, there we go, certain things just pass us by. And this is going to be a time where we're finding other people very provocative, very, you know, abrupt. And it's because we're all so driven. We're all wanting to go our own way, stand out, you know, follow our own thoughts. And the strength card here at our root is really helping us do that. But it's also showing us to move forward with compassion, move forward with love and with honor and with understanding, knowing that the lion is only walking by the woman because he loves her, not because she's making him. And this is what we're going to find in our world. You know, there is Oh, I forget. It's on an old tablet. It says better to be feared than to be loved. But you know what? That's a very old idea and a very old way to rule. It is a powerful thing to be loved and to be respected and to be honored and not ruling because of fear and because if you don't, you know, something terrible will happen to you. That there, there is, there's a brutishness to that. And here the strength is to be almost the best version of ourselves. Or even when we mess up, even when we're not doing things correctly, to own it, to say it, you know, okay, fine, I, I see, I see what I have done. And now I'm moving forward in this honor, in this beauty, in this understanding of me. And that takes tremendous strength. And we're going to see that our dreams and our desires are lighting our way in the darkness, in our inner selves, to where it is that we truly want to be, what it is we truly need for ourselves, who it is that we truly are. There's going to be times here where we just need to quiet the outside world and say, you know what, I can't listen to what you're saying. You know, we can have people telling us, especially around art or around ideas or around, you know, our expression, even around work. It doesn't mean that we have to be an artist. We can be a scientist and we have this idea and it's like, you know, do I move forward this way or do I look at it that way? And everybody's going to have a way that we should be doing it, right? But they're not going to have any kind of more practical plan. And we're going to need to listen to that, to that instinct of, okay, I need to move forward like this, or I need to look at this, or I need to open up this door. It doesn't mean that we just go rogue and, you know, can completely mess something up, but it does mean that we need to trust ourselves more. And we need to do little exercises during this time, just trusting ourselves more, not letting people get away with certain things that we might think, okay, well, that's silly. And I don't need to be so, you know, pushy with this or pushy with that. And, and spirit is saying here, no, you need to stand up for yourself and what you want and not let your voice die away, but do so in a respectful, loving way that brings eternal strength and success to you. And we have the moon right here. And it's so interesting because when I first looked at this or when I've read this card in this deck a couple of times, I thought, oh, okay, the monsters are trying to scare us away. But what if the monster is protecting us as we sleep? You know, kind of that rockabye baby, but this time with the monster being the one that says, don't worry, I will catch you no matter when you fall or if you fall. And there's a power to that. There's a beauty to that. There's a beauty in the sense of I am being protected. And as I am being protected, I am seeing myself more and more. As I face my fears, I look and see how they can become my allies, how I can transform and I can step into a world that I've always wanted to be a part of. And we're looking at the changing faces also of ourselves because the moon always changes her face always changes the way she presents herself to the world. And we have that energy to us to always change the way we present ourselves to our world as we embrace the world, as we see what it is that we want, as we see what it is that we desire, as we look at the way that we want, need, you know, long to move forward for ourselves. And it brings us into a new understanding of our world, a new place that we want to be in within our world. And it has us taking that leap of faith, saying, I have to jump. 
you know, I have to go after this. And it could be just planting a vegetable garden in, in the spring. It can be, you know, doing something, you know, out of this world if we want to, you know, going on an adventure or, you know, learning a new a new craft or a new hobby or, or something, incorporating something more into, into what we do to be able to bring an added depth, an added layer. And the fool is saying, go for it. Remember, every single hero, when they start their journey, is a fool. So if they don't see, if they mock, if they don't understand, do not let them rip you down. Keep on moving forward. Keep on going after what is deeply needed because it brings us to the Ten of Pentacles. It brings us to prosperity and success, to be shared with our community, to be shared with our world and ourselves, to really open up the door and say, this is the power of me. You know, this is where I need to be. This is generational blessing coming in. This is wealth coming into our lives. And this is us being able to see a new, a new prosperity, a new start. This is the end of a cycle with money. So we're going to see ourselves, you know, being able to honor everything that we've learned, every blessing that's come our way, every idea that has opened itself to us. And we have the hanged man. And the hanged man here says waiting, rebirth, sacrifice, and reflection. And we have to remember, this is how Odin got his sight. You know, in, in North mythology, he was the, the father of, of the gods, the, the one who, who really led them. And Odin got his sight by hanging upside down from a tree. And this is also the sight in an alchemy of of wisdom, you know, of calling forward wisdom, of calling forward, you know, new ideas. And so that's what we're embracing here. We're embracing a new sight, a new idea, a new passion, a new power forward. forward. There's something that needs to be sacrificed because there always is when new knowledge comes to us and opens up new avenues of thought. But there is also something profound that is driving us forward. And it brings us to the Ace of Wands. This is career and beginnings and travel. And this is a sense of God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift that says there's more to this waking world than you are seeing. There's passion and there's beauty and there's fire to it. Are you on this journey? Like, are you going to accept this brilliance and shine forward with it? Or are you going to hide away? There's going to be something amazingly beautiful here. And what spirit is saying is that this will light your way. This will be the, the changing point, the turning point, and something more, something profound is coming forward. And so to be able to embrace that is to be able to truly see yourself. So let's look at our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And it's the moon. It's getting in our own way. It's letting fear win. That's going to be something that we need to be, excuse me, we need to be very mindful of during this time, letting the fear win. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy and it's grounding we need to be grounded this is again the earth star chakra located six inches below our feet we need to be gro grounded and we need to be feeding ourselves properly meaning you don't plant a cactus in the middle of you know a forest and you don't plant an oak tree in the middle of a desert we need to know what we need what nourishes us what builds us what brings us forward and what doesn't because that's going to be very 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 profound our subconscious rooted energy is temperance balance harmony at our root, that's what we need. We need to be harmonizing ourselves, balancing ourselves, looking at what our soul deeply needs and deeply desires. Also what we need in the waking world. We don't have to sit there and make it so abstract to say, oh, this is what my soul deeply desires. This is what I need. This is the balance of what I need. This is the harmony I need within my life. It moves us to our subconscious in ourself. And that is the six of wands. It's time to start celebrating who we are, what we want, how we're moving forward in our lives, what we desire for, for us. And it brings us to our subconscious emotional self. And that is the four of pen that is the three of pentacles. That's hard work and dedication. It is commitment to to our prosperity. And it is the quiet to see what we need to create, what we need to cultivate, how we are opening ourselves to our dreams and our greater desires and our instincts and what is important to us and what isn't important to us. And as we're doing this, it's like, oh, okay, that's what I need. That's what's going to keep me warm. That's what I don't need. Mind your money during this time, most definitely, especially emotionally. We can be much more kind of frivolous than we need to be. So mind your money as the blessings come in and also as we are creating this warmth and stability for us. Our subconscious public arena self is the Ace of Cups. 
And here it says, love, relationships, beginning. And it repeats that as a mantra, love, relationships, beginning. This is a gift handed to us for us, Pisces. We are represented by the cups in the minor arcana, by the moon in the major arcana. And this gift from God's source spirit, again, however you see the divine, the universe, comes forward. It's healing, beautiful love. It's strengthening our relationships within this world. It's bringing us a sense of peace, a sense of structure, a sense of, you know, foundational understanding in what we want, in the way that we're moving forward, in what we don't want in our lives anymore, and what's sacredly important. And that becomes astoundingly powerful. All right. All right, Pisces. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. So let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.